ever wondered how to prioritize your life according to Islamic principles? We all strive to find that perfect balance in life, don't we? The balance where our material and spiritual lives coexist harmoniously. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. We're going to explore nine powerful strategies rooted in Islamic teachings that can help us prioritize our lives, making us a priority without even begging for attention. We'll discuss how Islam, a religion of moderation, guides us to follow the path of the messenger and his rightly guided successors without exceeding the limits imposed. We'll delve into how committing to religion and developing self-confidence can lead to becoming a priority for oneself and others, and how these strategies can help us embody rare values and show a good image of Islam. So are you ready to embark on this journey of self-discovery and personal growth? Let's delve into these nine powerful strategies. The first strategy is to prioritize your deen. Now, what does it mean to prioritize your deen? It means to make your faith a central part of your life, not just an afterthought or an add-on. This doesn't mean you have to abandon the material world. Quite the contrary. Islam encourages us to find balance between our worldly responsibilities and our spiritual pursuits. It's about harmonizing the two, not choosing one over the other. This balance is essential because it prevents religion from becoming an additional burden. Instead, it becomes a source of guidance, comfort, and inner peace. The beauty of Islam lies in its moderation. It teaches us to follow the path of the messenger and his successors rightly guided without exceeding the limits imposed. Therefore, prioritizing Deen is not about leading an ascetic life, it's about leading a balanced life, a meaningful life. Making Deen a priority leads to a balanced life. Strategy number two is commitment to religion and building self-confidence. Let's understand this. Commitment to your faith isn't about sacrificing everything else, it's about finding balance by making religion a priority, you're not just nurturing your spiritual self, you're also developing values and ethics that make you stand out in a crowd. This commitment, in turn, fuels your self-confidence. How so, you might ask? Well, when you understand your worth in the grand scheme of creation and acknowledge the role you are meant to play, your confidence soars. It's a confidence that is grounded not in selfish pride, but in the awareness of one's value. It's about standing tall, not above others, but amidst them, radiating the light of faith and wisdom. Remember, your commitment to your faith and the confidence it instills in you are not just about personal growth. They influence how others perceive you, shaping you into a priority. Commitment and confidence are keys to becoming a priority. Third strategy is to develop confidence and avoid overthinking. Confidence is a radiant light that illuminates your path and guides others too. It's not about being flawless, but acknowledging your worth and unique place in the grand scheme of creation. When you stand tall, grounded in your beliefs and confident in your actions, you become a beacon for others, showcasing the beauty of balance and moderation in Islam. On the flip side, overthinking is a murky fog that can cloud your vision and paralyze your steps forward. It's the seed of doubt that sprouts into fear of failure or rejection. Overthinking often leads to inaction and inaction to missed opportunities. Remember, mistakes are part of being human and they're the stepping stones to growth and wisdom. So embrace your strengths, accept your flaws and stride forth with confidence. Let the light of self-assuredness dispel the shadows of doubt. Confidence is attractive, overthinking is not. The fourth strategy is to choose your company and environment wisely. Imagine yourself as a seed. To grow and flourish, you need the right soil, the right amount of sunlight and the right kind of care. The same applies to our lives. The people we surround ourselves with and the environments we habitually inhabit can have a profound impact on our faith, our self-esteem and our overall outlook on life. In a garden of thorns, even the most resilient flower struggles to bloom. Toxic friendships, negative environments, these are the thorns that can hinder our growth, chip at our self-esteem and even challenge our faith. On the contrary, a garden of roses allows the flower to bloom beautifully. When we surround ourselves with positive, uplifting people in an environment that nurtures our faith and bolsters our confidence, we are more likely to flourish. Good company fosters a good environment. The fifth strategy is to maintain a level of mystery. Now, this doesn't mean playing games or being elusive for the sake of it. Rather, it's about understanding the value of modesty and discretion in our own lives. You see, maintaining a certain degree of mystery can enhance your appeal. It's like a book that keeps you hooked. The less you know, the more you want to know. 
In the context of Islam, modesty is highly prized. It's not just about how we dress or act, but also about what we choose to share and keep to ourselves. This isn't about hiding who we are, but being mindful of our own privacy and the respect we show to others. It's about striking a balance between openness and maintaining a sense of personal sanctity. By keeping some matters private, we generate interest and respect from others. Always remember, Islam teaches us the importance of modesty and confidentiality. Mystery enhances appeal. The sixth strategy is learning to say no without guilt. You've heard it before, right? But it's easier said than done. Yet, in the grand tapestry of life, setting boundaries is essential. It's not about being selfish, it's about self-preservation. Think of it this way, when you're on an airplane, what do they tell you? In case of emergency, put on your own oxygen mask first before helping others. The same principle applies to life. You can't pour from an empty cup. You need to take care of yourself first to be able to give to others effectively. In Islam, this concept is not foreign. The Prophet Muhammad once said, start with yourself and then those next to you. This means taking care of our own needs before we can effectively care for those around us. Let's remember, it's okay to say no. It doesn't make you a bad person, it makes you a responsible one. Saying no is not always negative. The seventh strategy is being prepared to suffer and seek refuge in Allah. In this journey of life, suffering is not an anomaly, but a universal human experience. Yet it holds a unique place in the grand design of existence. It's a touchstone of spiritual growth, a catalyst for self-discovery and a means to purify us from sins. In Islam, we are taught to face these challenges with patience and resilience and to seek solace and refuge in Allah. This act of seeking refuge is not a sign of weakness, but rather a testament of our faith and trust in Allah's wisdom and mercy. It's about acknowledging our human limitations and surrendering to the divine power. Remember, every hardship we endure is an opportunity for spiritual elevation, for every trial we pass earns us rewards in the hereafter. So, be prepared to suffer, because through this suffering we grow, we learn, and most importantly, we purify. Suffering can lead to purification, the eighth strategy is to seek Allah's approval in all actions. This is a key aspect of living a fulfilling and meaningful life. It is about having sincerity and devotion in all we do, not for the sake of human approval, but for the sake of our Creator. This strategy reminds us that our actions, our words, our intentions should all be driven by our faith and devotion to Allah. When we engage in any activity, let's ask ourselves, is this pleasing to Allah? If the answer is yes, we are on the right path. If the answer is no, it's time to reassess. This approach helps us to live a life of integrity and purpose, always striving to do what is right in the eyes of Allah. When we seek Allah's approval above all else, we find ourselves leading a life that is not only rewarding in this world, but also promising in the hereafter. Remember, in the grand scheme of things, Allah's approval is paramount. Let's briefly recap these nine powerful Islamic strategies. First off, remember to prioritize your deen, balance the material and spiritual aspects of your life, and follow the path of moderation. Secondly, commit to your religion and foster self-confidence, understanding your value and role in Allah's creation. Next, develop confidence and avoid the trap of overthinking, which can lead to inaction and fear. Choose your company wisely, as the environment you surround yourself with can greatly impact your self-esteem and faith. Maintain an aura of mystery about yourself, as Islam teaches the importance of modesty and confidentiality. Learn to say no without guilt. Generosity doesn't mean meeting every request. Be prepared to face suffering and always seek refuge in Allah, demonstrating your spiritual maturity. Lastly, seek the approval of Allah for all your actions, motivated by faith and devotion rather than human approval. Implement these strategies and see the transformation in your life.